Good evening, everybody. My name is Niveta Thomas. It is really nice to see you all. For a girl with many dreams, aspirations, and ambitions, the one thing that I was fighting against was the lack of time. But I think it's safe to say we all wish we had more of that time. As our lives and everything around us seems to be moving, seems to be like uh, somebody played a tape recorder, pressed the fast forward button and left it that way, it's all moving at such a rapid pace, right? So it is only fair to us to pause, breathe, and take a moment to think about the past, the good we faced, the bad we experienced. But mind you, when you move forward in life, the only baggage that you would want to carry forward should be the good because it would be an unpleasant case otherwise. As I sat down to think about how to brainstorm and compile everything that I wanted to talk about today, there was one moment, it was more of a revelation, when I realized if one 23-year-old had so many things to talk about, so much to say, imagine the kind of life experiences and stories you would get to hear from people around the world. It was really exciting to think about it. Let me take you through mine now. So I was born and raised in the beautiful Chennai city, but my roots go back to a small village in, uh, Ed called Edur in Iriti, Kerala. Though I was raised, schooled, everything in Tamil Nadu, my connect with my homeland, Kerala, is very strong. In fact, it's as strong as my love for kappa, fish curry, parampuri, and chaya is. If there are Malayalis here, you will know exactly what I'm talking about. It's deep, trust me. But I think I am privileged to say I believe that I am equally a Telugu Ammai now as much as I am a Malayali and a Tamilian. And this, because this cultural integration is what makes me call anywhere home. And I believe this cultural integration is, is necessary for us to grow better. Rolling back a couple of years, now we're getting into the, the, the topic. I'm going to share with you a couple of my life experiences, what I went through and whatever I am today is because of all these experiences I, I had. So I would like to share it with all of you. So rolling back a couple of years, the word school, the word school resonated with an album to me, like a photo album of Polaroids flashing in front of my eyes. I have very vivid uh, memories of what school meant to me. I faced the camera first when I was eight years old. Um, and since then, believe it or not, I have been to school sometimes, visited school, by visit I mean, literally just visited school three or four times, three or four days a month. Honestly, that's how much I've been there. There are, I, I think, definitely my teachers must have seen uh, chief guests repeat themselves to events more than I've actually been in school. But going to work, acting, you know, on longer sch schedules and then coming back to sitting in class, being attentive, completing classworks, being on par with where the rest of the class was, was very taxing. Sometimes I would also want to give up removing all the makeup before I fly to bed. But before I could think about it or realize, you know, the, the, the struggle with all this, this had already become my life. So, as a kid, I remember, I wanted to take a moment to decide on a few things before I proceeded forward. I wanted to draw a line between work and study. That's what I wanted to do. It sounds like a very, very simple idea, but trust me when I say this, it required a battalion, a battalion of people to execute. I needed my teachers, my principal, my friends from workplace, my friends from school, my producers, my directors, all my technicians, and my family, more than anything. And today, when I look back and think about it, I have been more than blessed. I feel like I've been blessed more than required to have had them all. In fact, my school was so supportive. My principal, Brother George, was so supportive of me going to act that the three or four days that I would go to, go to school, he would look at me and be like, oh, Niveta, you're here. When are you going back to work? I was like, let me, and my timing was so off. The four or five days that I, that I got to be in school, 
was when I had my math test. Don't even ask me about it. I've also played stunts where I, I have fever and I, I want my mom to take me back home just once. But yeah, I've done that, <laughs> sadly. School was, um, school was a bundle. School was what set my foundation. The base of, the base for me was, is, is, is just, is so strong and I can so happily say that my character and my personality, anything to deal with the development of my personality, I owe it to my school. And I can't thank uh, or talk enough about the importance of holistic education that I received from school. This one memory is so vivid in my mind where um, the fact that I, the announcement of me receiving my first ever award for my first film in Malayalam, which is called Verdi Urubaria, I had received a Kerala State Award for it and the, the person I got to know that from was Brother George, my principal. I was in the school ground practicing long jump or something for the sports day, all muddy and dirty. And um, there's a student who comes, says, uh, principal's calling you. What do you instantly think? I'm like, what did I do now? I behaved, I was okay. Did I do something wrong? So from point A to point B, that's what I'm, I'm thinking about. So I go to his office and then he turns on the television, tunes into a channel. And he simply said, you won. So I saw my name scrolling down with uh, the picture and Honestly, that moment, it hit me so hard that rather than feeling accomplished or satisfied, everything around me became muted. It, it got really quiet. And I thought that appreciation came just at the right moment in my life when I almost took it synonymous to wanting to show my gratitude towards all the people who helped me get to that point. My principal, my family, everybody came to my mind at that point. It was just so special and that episode ended with, you know, like in my mind it was like all my teachers congratulating me and seeing them celebrate and seeing them feel so joyous about um, me achieving something was validation to me that all that hours and days of hard work, doing what I loved doing was absolutely worth it. So from then on, I was happily studying away till there was one moment where I, I, I think I, I can speak confidently for all of you. There's that one moment in your school life when we feel something completely brand new. This is exactly after I finished my 12th grade, which for some reason at this point in time, it feels like a danger zone. That's how, it, that's how it's uh, made to be felt like a danger zone, when I crossed that, that, that state, I was posted with a very, very, very difficult question. What next? Honestly, this is how it was in my mind. The room got extremely dark. There's a focus light on you. All your relatives start becoming active again, even distant ones. Your parents are alert. Your siblings, and if you have younger ones, a sister or a brother, he or she is suddenly looking up, up at you thinking, what are you going to do? Who are you going to be? What do you want to become? What do you want to become? Who do you want to be in life? Like, do this as an exercise. Just go home and say this question three times and you'll want to sit down. Because I've never been able to answer this question. Who do you want to become? What do you want to become in life? It's an incredibly heavy question, which I feel requires a lot of thinking and a lot more living to actually figure out. So at that point, I had to choose between walking a trodden path or an untrodden path. Either you work in films or you study something, you specialize in some field and become something. But I chose to walk in between. Yeah, I did. <laughs> Back then, I didn't know. I, I was just, I, I remember telling my parents, uh, Amma, Daddy, I want, to, I want to work as I'm studying. And I remember them looking at each other and they were like, well, 
if you can manage, then we don't have a problem with it. Because honestly, this decision was taken by me, honestly, because I couldn't imagine myself doing just one of it. Because most of my life, I've been working and studying together. So I just couldn't think about doing, choosing one. From that point on, everything moved so fast. It moved literally like this. I moved on from wanting to study aerospace engineering to joining university to study five years of architecture. Don't ask me how that happened. That happened. So when this fairy tale of school life was just ending, the actual picture came into my life when I started college. College came in like a royal entry. It had a royal entry. College sort of feels like um, us going to watch a Rajnikanth film first day, first show. You have this unexplainable um, high. You don't know what you're feeling. You suddenly feel like an adult. You, you know, you're given, a, you're given a car. You can drive yourself to college. You know, school, so it's only cycling and auto man. Remember my van driver who drove me for 14 years and suddenly you have a car. You have a place to park your car. And then you're no longer wearing uniforms. It's so exciting, you know, you, you feel like you're an adult and you have responsibilities. And honestly, no money can ever buy the experiences that I had or the lessons I learned during college. The five years of me studying in that institution and um, moving around with the people there, it taught me more about myself than anything or anybody could have ever taught me. College was fun, but architecture did not serve it easy for me or for any of my classmates for that matter. Um, I was um, visibly struggling. Uh, at this point, I, was, I, I had a lot of struggles with um, having to manage minimum attendance required to appear for exams, um, struggling with trying, to, trying really hard to perform well, struggling with completing, completing designs uh, on time, struggling to be on par with where the rest of the class was. This was extremely taxing, it was. But while also listening to script readings and there were a lot of narrations happening, which I would okay at one point so that I can work on those films when I had my semester vacation. So this is how my pattern in college life was. All this was happening, but the real struggle was inside me. I was constantly at war with my mind. I was struggling with exaggerated thoughts. I was fighting against stress more than the physical exhaustion. I was fighting against stress, strain, uh, fear, doubt, overthinking, procrastination, and also extreme self-criticism. All these were uh, emotions I was not prepared to face. I was not prepared to handle. Nobody taught me in school or anywhere to, to learn how to handle these things. And all I would do is sometimes just break down and cry. Would that make me feel better? Sometimes, but not really. I would not know what to do. When I was in a point that way, um, it was extremely difficult. Now, when I think about that phase between 2013 and 2018, happily thinking about it, I often think, how did I even get through? How did I get through that, that, that point? How did I go through from semester to semester? How did I even do that? I think about it. And there were a couple of things that came to my mind. Was it uh, the way I was so warmly welcomed into a whole new industry, the Telugu industry, which happened during my second year of college? Or was it the kind of appreciation that I and my team received for films like Gentlemen and Ninnukori and everything that followed? Was it the radical thinking of my mum and the constant support she gave me? Was it the difficulty with which my father moved so far away from family to work for the family, earn money for the family, keep us in good shape, while he missed us so much and still worked with so much of conviction? Was it seeing my brother live his life like there's no tomorrow, so happy? 
was it seeing my friends though they were having struggles of their own working extremely hard toiling rigorously to make sure that they accomplish their dreams while helping me out too or was it the hand of god that was constantly there beside me guiding me through every step of the way and always whispering in my ears that you're not alone yes i believe it was all of this but most importantly it was the small decision that i i made to have little faith in myself that i could do it no matter what i could do it it seemed like a very very simple idea but um it actually worked i just thought this is my life i wanted this i should be prepared for all of this because i chose this the decision was mine so no matter how difficult it gets nobody is going to help you nobody is going to be able to help you but yourself so when i passed out of college honestly i came out i believe i came out much stronger i came out to be a stronger person mentally and physically i started appreciating myself more i accepted the bodily changes i had through time i understood the value and importance of constructive criticism and i started seeing beauty in flaws because trust me i realized more than ever that we are perfect just the way we are we don't realize it we are perfect just the way we are and boys and girls please don't bend your knee to satisfy societal standards live your life because that's yours and no matter how much you wish you got help no matter how much you wish that this moment just passed i close my eyes and this moment just pass it will never happen because those things only happen in movies you know they really don't happen in real life so as long as you start believing in believing in yourself these things will not magically happen and through all this i realized the importance of people and the importance of interaction i needed people you know people are what people are who made me get through all this time they helped me a lot every doctor needs a patient every police needs a case every climber needs a mountain every speaker needs an audience likewise every actor needs an audience like every speaker needs a listener every actor needs an audience and me being an actor i feel extremely privileged to be able to be so many different kinds of people because that is my dream we human beings are gregarious in nature no man is an island we cannot live in an, in an alienated society so i believe the choices i make i wanted the choices that i make to have a rippling effect in the society but not a crippling effect i wanted to make sure that i am different people that was my dream that is my dream i want to be so many different characters i want to have uh, i want to portray the shades that we all experience and we wish we experience from good to the bad to fictional everything and i all this while everything that i was saying my life story is not great my life story is not extraordinary and i did not do great things but the only thing that i did and that i'm happy about is that i just would not quit i would not want to stop trying so i want to portray people that way you know and the medium this is my dream so the medium i choose to voice out my expression is cinema and i will always continue doing that thank you all